Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video here in the preview event for the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. So thanks to Wizards for having me. Today we're taking a look at the Red Green Dinosaurs, which is filled with a lot of new exciting cards. We've got some early mana acceleration for dinosaurs with the Lore Keeper. We also have access to the Paleontologist, which can eventually get dinosaurs back from the graveyard with a finality counter one more time. So that also gives us a bit more late game. Then there's the Yurling, which can get a lot of extra power if we play larger dinosaurs, so that can hit pretty hard with Trample. We've got the Hammer Skull, a nice 3 mana 6-6, six, six. no real drawback as long as we control another dinosaur. Then we can also potentially use the Carnosaur's ability at 3 mana to deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker, or we can cast it for 6 mana as a 7-6 Trample with a new Discover ability. So this is kind of the new take on Cascade. We exile cards off the top of our library until we hit a non-land card with mana value 5 or less. We can either cast it for free, or we can put it into our hand. And then at 4 mana there's Hulking Raptor, which can also be set up early thanks to our Lore Keeper and Paleontologist. And then at the beginning of our pre-combat main phase we can add double green, so that also helps us ramp while putting a 5-3 Dinosaur in play that can of course attack and block, and has a bit of built-in protection with a Ward 2. And then all that extra mana can be used to maybe ramp out a Bone Horde Drakosaur, definitely one of the more exciting dinosaurs coming into this set, a 5-5 Flying First Strike, and then every turn provides additional advantage by exiling the top two cards of our library. We can play them this turn. If we exile the land, we also get to make a 3-1 a Dinosaur Creature token. If we exile a non-land card, we get to make a Treasure token. So all modes, of course, are awesome, and just a 5-5 Flying First Strike is already very good, especially against opposing creature decks. Then we also have two copies of the Polanyi's Hatcher, which is a 5-3, it says author dinosaurs we control have haste, and then also makes two egg tokens when it enters, and once each turn we can transform an egg into a 3-3 token, which can then of course immediately attack thanks to haste, and then setting up haste on our author dinosaurs in future turns will also be quite powerful. And then we've got some returning dinosaurs with Kogla and Hidaro, which can also use its 4-man ability if we need to take out an artifact or enchantment, and then we still get to draw a card, or we can play it as a 6-mana 7-7 seven that can either fight or enter with trample and haste in case we maybe don't have a hatcher to give it haste instead. And then we also have two copies of Itali, which of course remains a very powerful card in standard and also happens to be a dinosaur. And then we also have one copy of the Skullspore Nexus. This gets a discount similar to the Great Henge, so especially nice with an early Hammer Skull, which we could already play on turn 2 thanks to the Lore Keeper. And then this will replace our dead dinosaurs with a large Fungus Dinosaur token, and we can also activate it to double a creature's power until end of turn. And then we also have some uh, cheap removal with Triumphant Chomp, which at the very least deals 2 damage, but it also scales with the greatest power among dinosaurs we control, so in the late game can even take out larger creatures from the opponent. And then our mana base has some very nice upgrades. Cavern of Souls, probably one of the more exciting additions for standard, as it can name a creature type and then make those creatures uncounterable. So that will be very helpful against blue decks. And then we also have some new creature lands with a Restless Ridge line, which actually turns into a dinosaur, a 3-4, that can give another attacking creature plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn and untap it. And then uh, some other red-green dual lands to make sure we can curve out nicely, and some basics. And then the channel lands offer a bit more utility as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn to Paleontologist, hopefully setting up double two-drop on turn three. Facing vampires. Vampires now getting access to Cavern of Souls as well, alongside Secluded Courtyard to fix their colors, so it's pretty easy to play a three-color vampire deck nowadays. Socialite is acceptable. And yeah, I like Yurling plus Paleontologist number two here. That way Hammer Skull can pump Yurling to attack for six Trample next turn, or we could go with Hatcher first and then a hasty Hammer Skull afterward. Another Epic here. So that's gonna help enable Socialite. And Mark of Baron. Okay. Also has Madness, so it does play quite well with Blood Token, so you can discard it and then still Convoke it out. I'll just take three for now. Ooh, nice. Drakosaur is also pretty decent. Could still go with Hatcher first, just to maybe bait out removal. And then kind of gum up the ground a little bit more. 
Drancostar is going to be a bit weaker in the face of spot removal. So we want to make sure to grow the Yorling with the final trigger, so... It goes up to 5 power. And then, do I want to trade it for an Epicure? Not really. Although that trade's still gonna remain on the table for quite some time, and it does enable Paleontologist to eventually get it back. So, this seems reasonable, could also leave the Dinosaur token back. And our opponent takes five. Okay, opponent's got Edgar to pump all vampires. But no attacks. And then now we can try and take over with a Dracosaur. Could also attack with haste. Although may not be necessary, could just kinda chill on defense. Don't have the best attacks on the ground. I guess Yorling could still get busy, although trading for Edgar's not necessarily good for us. So yeah, let's just play defense, maybe send Dracosaur since we have enough bank on defense on the ground, since we do want to start pressuring them a little bit. And then if they remove Dracosaur, we at least got 5 damage in, and then Paleontologist can try and get it back. There's the Infernal Grasp, does cost them 2 life. So, can't quite replay Dracosaur this turn. Could go Yurling plus Hasty Hammer Skull. And that does represent quite a bit of damage. And uh, three three tokens can hang back for now. And again, with double paleontologist in play, we're happy making any and all trades. Estate can make a blood token on the way out. And our opponent's gonna gain four back up to eight. A bunch of trades happen. And then next turn, we could activate paleontologist and replay a Dracosaur if we'd like with haste. Thanks to the Hatcher. Glorifier can sacrifice an artifact here to make a couple counters. So yeah, let's go for it. And then now do we attack with everyone? Seems reasonable to me. They do still survive thanks to lifelink. But we put them pretty low. And we can always get back the hatcher next turn. They need an answer to the Dracosaur. Florian can maybe provide some card advantage. Finds the new sacrifice outlets. Bartolome can become quite large, but still doesn't fly. And there we see Cavern of Souls, so a couple of the new additions here for the vampire deck. Alright, sweet. Can just get in with the Dracosaur. Don't have to make it too complicated. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's a little slow. No one or two mana accelerants. But uh, I don't think I can pass this up. Hammer Skull into, hopefully, Hulking Raptor, which will set up our Dracosaur. And then we might draw some accelerants in the meantime, whether it's Lorekeeper or Paleontologist. Opponent also red-green, and there's Paleontologist. So now we could set up turn 3 Raptor, which will add even more mana. But we still have a backup plan if they answer the Paleontologist. 
Turn to Yurling. Okay, so another dinosaur deck. Being on the play, of course, helps, and we've got a very nice start. It's going to be difficult for them to answer the Raptor, but not impossible if they have the one mana removal spell. Can deal three damage thanks to the Yurling, and then they can still pay the ward, but it's going to be a Hammer Skull instead. Yeah, that still adds up here. Gets in for six, but I want Raptor for the extra mana. Okay, so we've got a total of seven mana here to spend, so we could play another Raptor and play Hammer Skull, which makes sense. And then wait another turn on Dracosaur, since that would be my entire turn otherwise. And then Hammer Skull is happy to trade off for the opponent's copy. And with Paleontologist we can eventually get our dinosaurs back as well. Especially with the extra mana from Hulking Raptor. So just a Hammer Skull attacking makes sense. I could double block to play around a pump spell. If they have a fight spell instead, it's unlikely that they can blow me out too badly here. So I think a single block is fine. Don't really want to lose a Raptor. Right, and the trade happens. Okay, so now we've got nine mana total, so I can play another Raptor and Dracosaur. And then I think we still play defense since your link can present a lot of damage next turn. It's gonna be the Hatcher. So they wouldn't be able to attack past our first striking Dracosaur all that easily. Have to be careful with the Yurling triggers when making egg tokens, but I'm sure they'll be able to get it back up to 5 power here. We might see an all-out attack, but... Yep, Ponon goes for it. So we can take out Yurling with first strike, and then I think it's reasonable to trade one Raptor for one Yurling. Still take two Trample plus three is five down to seven. Next turn, their dinosaurs will have haste. But uh, yeah. We'll get to pull ahead with Dracosaur so the extra mana can come in handy. Just finding a couple of lanes. Okay. So I can use the Paleontologist ability here. Get back a Hammer Skull, which has a bit more toughness. And then play Yurling. Don't mind attacking with uh, Raptors now to trade for Hatcher. Turn is at 10. And then next turn we can hopefully cross the finish line. Another Hatcher. So that does represent a lot of extra haste damage here. But no trample at least. So we should be alright. And then Paleontologist can activate once again to try and get back Raptor next turn. Find a Carnosaur. So we could play the 6 mana Dinosaur, since we can't use the 3 mana ability from Exile. And then power up here. Okay, can play another Raptor, but uh, can attack first. So if I send in everyone, what happens? 
opponent takes at least five, so they're at a virtual five life. Don't think Paleontologist has a great attack necessarily. They can chump with an egg on Hammer Skull. Then they still need to put at least one blocker in front of the Yearling. And then still take four Trample. So then they have four blockers left. One, two, three. So yeah, they could conceivably survive. So it's not the safest attack out there, but I'll still be able to play another blocker here. Maybe attacking with Paleontologist is still reasonable since we would trample more with the Yearling. Since, let's see, Chump, block, four blockers left. Yeah, this seems fine. So this still has them dead since they take four trample, seven plus five. So they have to trade away the hatcher. So this way they would still be alive. I'll have to take one damage of Carpluson Forest to play Hulking Raptor. And then we'll be at six. But most of the opponent's board will be gone. Oh, I guess we should have played uh, Raptor while we had the chance, because of course it relies on Paleontologist still being in play. Alright, opponent with a couple hasty dinos, but we should be able to survive here. Alright. And attack. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems relatively balanced. Turn two, Paleontologists. Turn three, we have a few removal options. Opponent with turn one Epicures, who might be a Vampire Sacrifice deck. So hopefully we get to play our Raptor next turn which can ramp out our Carnosaur on the following turn. Okay, red-white, so more of an aggro deck. Take two. And play turn three Raptor. It's not going to be easy for the opponent to remove through Ward. And if we get to untap here, we can do some damage. Opponent passes. And see, so yeah, the options are plentiful. We've got a total of seven mana, so could play Cogline, Tidaro, and still Chomp. Could play Dracosaur. And maybe Chomp the Scoundrel. And try and leverage Dracosaur for card advantage. And then now the Raptor and the Paleontologist are probably good to attack. Our opponent goes digging, discarding Frontliner. So it might be kind of a red-white tokens deck. So hopefully we don't face a Sweeper here. It's going to be end of turn reinforcements. So they had the option of triple blocking, but didn't go for it. Okay, opponents destroying their own frontliner, making three goblins. So they are going wide. So having this flyer is going to be quite useful. Now the Yearling can also help us trample. So we've got some solid options available once again. So I want to play Raptor while we can. And that leaves three, four, five mana. So not quite enough for Carnosaur, but we can play Yearling, which seems all right. 
Could also use the Carnosaur's ability to destroy something. Maybe worth attacking with a Raptor if our opponent triple blocks, we can punish them. Opponent takes 10. Yeah, we could still face quite a bit of damage next turn. But thanks to the treasure, I can still use the ability at instant speed here. So if they had something like a recruiter to pump the team, we should still have been all right. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is relying on Lorekeeper to survive to set up our Dragosaur. And yeah, we might get there, but uh, it's definitely taking a bit of a risk. I'll give it a shot. And then turn one. Now yeah, let's run out Boseju, so I don't have to take damage off Carpluzan Forest. Most likely play a tapped Ridgeline next turn. And hit for one. Okay, ideally we find a 4-mana Dinosaur I can play next turn if a Lore Keeper is still around. The Skull Spore Nexus. Well, that will have to wait. For now, name Dinosaur. Don't even think I attack in case they have a Flash creature here. Not super likely, but I don't think the one damage is going to be all that relevant. Alright, do we get to keep our Lore Keeper? We do. Opponent with an Ancient One. So that does point towards maybe a combo mill deck. Okay, we get to play Dracosaur in the meantime. And then hopefully it survives for a turn to provide card advantage. Can deploy a Skull Spore Nexus as well. We'll see. Shieldred, okay, that's fine. Okay, so take our draw step. And then I do want to play this Nexus while I can. And then we can still play the Yearling and I guess also the Paleontologist thanks to the treasure. That looks good. Could also double the Drancosaur's power to immediately attack for 10. Although our opponent's going to gain 2 so it's not necessarily going to be a two-turn clock. So this needs to make dinosaur mana. And then now with the Nexus in play, we're not as sad if uh, they remove some of our creatures. Could also set up a nice play where we animate the ridge line, pump up one of our creatures, and then activate Nexus afterwards. So we could double 7 power up to 14. I'm the new boss around here. Join me. And wow, opponent with an Obnixilis, the adversary here, after sacking the Ancient One. Yeah, that's pretty sweet combo. And with the Shielded in play, they can immediately gain all that life back. So, yeah, seeing the power of a 2-mana 8-8, even if it cannot attack and block right away. So as the game goes on, our opponent's got a lot of cards in hand. Harvester. Okay. They'll have to discard to hand size here. And we found Itali. Yeah, that seems worth casting. So let's say we play Itali. And then... I would still have the Skull Spore activation left, potentially. We get to... Grow the Yearling. And we hit Cut Down and Raptor. So we can cut down the Harvester. Alright, so go to Attackers. Do I want to finish off Obnixilus? If we do, probably more important to answer the token as opposed to the real one. Opponent's at 23. Yeah. I guess we'll send Dracosaur at Token of Nixilis. Your link can go face. They will most likely block with a uh, Token to trade it off. And then we can still activate Skull Spore Nexus to make a large token on the way out. Empire 
crumbles. So you're laying down, Nexus triggers, and that's a nice 14-14 fungus dinosaur. Another ancient one. Do they have a second of Nixilis? They do. Alright, so they get to do the same song and dance. I'm gonna remake this town and I guess they can target me as well if they'd like. Yeah, and with Shielded in play, that should be game. Alright, sweet. Nice game here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and this hand seems a little bit too slow. Only two lands is going to be a mulligan here. If we had one more land, I might have given it a try. Okay, this one's not amazing, but got to keep bottom Itali. Very much possible that Itali isn't necessary in this deck, since we have enough going on as is. And if we don't have those early accelerants, it can be a bit tough to get to 7 mana before the game is over. Harvester can take out our Yurling. I think I still prefer that over them answering the Paleontologist, even though this could set up double 2-drop next turn if they don't activate the Harvester, but it seems unlikely. So then, if they remove Yurling now, we can maybe set up a turn 4 Dracosaur be a cut down instead that's also effective so they get to keep the harvester okay now we can chomp and then i'm liking paleontologist here over yearling gives us a chance of playing drancosaur although still pretty likely to be removed Our opponent's running the new creature land in red-black, something they were missing. Pretty cheap to activate, 2-3, that lets them discard and then draw. Okay, Preacher's a nice one, 2-4, provides a bunch of abilities. And we'll play our Hulking Raptor here and hope to untap with it. Preacher right now would draw them a card since they're at 18. If they use the Sulphur Springs to put themselves to 17, they would actually get both abilities of making a Vampire and drawing a card. And Breach is also quite nice. Can hold off our Raptor. But uh, I think we've got our eye on Dracosaur. Could also play Cogline Yudaro, fight Breaches, or deploy another Hulking Raptor plus Yurling, which I also don't mind. And then... We give them the chance to use removal next turn, and then hopefully Dracosaur can stick around, which is the more important card. Yeah, that seems okay. And then with Cogland Yudaro, we can pump the Yurling next turn to get a nice attack in, potentially. So Breaches points towards more pirates being in their deck. We'll go for the Throat Answers, Hulking Raptor, pays the ward. So yeah, that's playing kind of into our game plan now. Could even activate Paleontologist for two, and then get back Hulking Raptor right away. Which I also don't really mind here, since that kind of gives us more late game. And until they answer Paleontologist, we can just keep doing this. Now we still don't have a great attack, admittedly into the first striker, but it's all right. Now it does enter with a finality counter, so if they were to remove it again, it would get exiled. Our opponent with an appraiser here with the discover. The new take on Cascade finds breaches. They're not forced to cast it. They can simply put it in hand since they already have one in play. So that showcases one of the advantages of Discover. Breaches attacks, makes a treasure, and yeah, we'll take it. Get to untap with a lot of mana. 
So we can chomp the Preacher to get that out of the way. And then now might be a good time for Cogline Didaro over Drancosaur. And then we can immediately fight the Appraiser and get a nice attack in. Or we could give it haste. And then let's see. Your lingo is up to 7 power. So they have to block Cogline Yidaro and still take lethal. So yeah, that works. I guess fighting also would do the trick here. But I um, kind of prefer trample and haste. It's more satisfying. And attack all out. Now they do still potentially have two mana for interaction. Opponent blocks, but they're still going to take Trample. Alright, and that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand has a little bit of ramp, and then some solid early plays. So we'll keep. Hopefully we can ramp out this Drakosaur as soon as possible. But nice to have a backup plan here. Could also go for the more aggressive line, Yurling into Hammer Skull, which can hit for 6 next turn, and then play another Hammer Skull, which is also pretty decent. Yeah, you know what? Let's try that approach. Opponent with a hidden Necropolis, so it might be a slower cave deck, in which case we could maybe punish cards like Cut Down with. A nice 6-6 six, six on turn 3. Play Copper Line Gorge while we get a chance. And see if they have some instant speed removal here. It's going to be a candy grapple killing the Yurling, saving themselves 6 damage. Pretty good. So Paleontologist also would have fallen to their removal. And yeah, I think we ditch Paleontologist, even though it could eventually get back my dinosaurs. It's going to be pretty slow, whereas now I could play another Hammer Skull, hit for 6, and then if we draw lands, maybe play Drakosaur. Definitely a close call. They might have another discard effect. Nope. Alright, we want to play our second Hammer Skull before attacking, so we don't get a stun counter. Is at 14. And I would love to draw an untapped land here. Our opponent with a roaming throne, naming Phyrexian interesting. And we drew a third to Dracosaur. So that didn't quite pan out, but yeah, opponent still facing 12 damage. It's gonna chum block. If I draw an untapped land next turn, I might be better off activating my creature land. We'll see. Liliana's not bad. Although I could sacrifice the creature lands by activating it here. Help, it's definitely best. all in, since if I lose my land I'm even further from casting Dracosaur, but it could set up lethal next turn as well. So certainly a close call. Given how this game has gone, if our opponent had an answer to the Hammer Skull, it feels like they would have played it earlier. So, let's try this. One of your friends has to leave. They might have another Candy Grapple to shrink down my Hammer Skull. Still gonna go for it. That would put them to one, but nope, opponent's out of answers and takes 12 to the face. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is gonna rely pretty heavily on Lorekeeper to ramp out Hulking Raptor, which can then set up our more expensive plays, but uh, it seems pretty balanced. We've got Chompas early interaction as well. And yeah, potentially access to a turn two Hammer Skull against green-white. And Naya. Okay, let's go for it. And then next turn I'll still have Hulking Raptor as an option. T 
Topiary Stomper for ramp. So our opponent might have a couple sweepers in their deck, which are pretty good at punishing the start of Floor Keeper into Hulking Raptor. But I think we still gotta go for it here. Especially after drawing another Itali. We're gonna need to get to 7 mana. And yeah, next turn we could get there already with an untapped land if they don't interact. Another Stomper I don't mind. Can chomp one of them. Although for right now they don't even block. And with the two extra mana I can play Hatcher, which would present lethal. So let's tap the Lore Keeper actually, so I can still chomp if I'd like. But it may not be necessary. Tackle out. So yeah, blazing fast start here from the dinosaur deck onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine head. Chomp is a sorcery, so we won't be able to answer the opponent's one drop, but turn to Paleontologists sets up maybe Yurling and Chomp on the following turn. Well, let's see what our opponent's up to. Turn one Island and Siren, so maybe a pirate deck. So Cavern of Souls making our creatures uncounterable is going to be relevant. I always have to pause with Cavern of Souls to make sure I name Dinosaur instead of Dragon, because they do have some similarities, and of course Dracosaur has both creature types. Okay, point with a turn to Schooner. Could potentially take it out with Boseju. Don't think that's the priority right now. Play Yurling and then could hit for two. Don't think I'm chomping the Siren right now, even though it does screw the Schooner. Can save it for something scarier. Cavern of Souls naming Pirate. Cavern of Souls, probably one of the more important additions to Standard, coming from the Lost Caverns. It's gonna see play in pretty much every format where it's legal. Tomb Raider, 1 mana, 2-2 two, two hastes, since they have an artifact. And the Schooner attacks, letting the Siren explore, Kumano on top. So... Does point towards a pretty low curve aggressive deck, which makes sense. Now one of the downsides of Cavern is that it doesn't cast some of the non-creature spells like the uh, Kumano enchantment. Witch Docker Frenzy cleanly takes care of our Yurling. Alright, so we're definitely on the receiving end here of a lot of damage. Hopefully they can't answer the Dracosaur. Another Frenzy would do it. Would love to untap and uh, exile a few extra cards here. Then we could cheaply deploy our Nexus. Ooh, Larcenist is a good one too. It's gonna turn our Dracosaur into a treasure temporarily. And Chomp only deals two right now. So not enough to take out the Larcenist. Alright, so we're at seven. It's not looking great. Need to find a medium-sized dinosaur. Crewmate can find more pirates. And another Larcenist is ready to go. Yeah, I do have Boseju to answer the schooner. Could also play Nexus, but that leaves us pretty dead. So... Could also, let's see, use a Paleontologist to get back Yurling, play the Yurling. But then I won't have the mana to chomp the Larcenists. I guess we do. Ward is only one. Alright, I guess that's the play, but we know another Larcenist is incoming. So that will probably still leave us dead. Because Larcenus does have Ward 1. And 
since, of course, we don't want to sacrifice our treasure here. So we temporarily get back the Dracosaur. So yeah, if they didn't have a second Larcenist, we might have been able to stabilize here. But I'm afraid that uh, double Larcenist is going to be a bit too much. Strangle exiles Yurling because of the finality counter. And Breaches can also allow an attack here. Alright, so good to see some nice pirate action. Larcenist and Breaches definitely among the more exciting additions for the archetype. But also just a nice collection of low-curve creatures such as the Tomb Raider and the Siren. So it seems like a very viable archetype going forward. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. Turn 1, the Lore Keeper sets up turn 2, Hammer Skull. Although Red Black has cut down to slow us down here. Okay, so I could play Paleontologist, and then next turn, Hammer Skull. If Paleontologist survives, or if we draw another untapped land, I think that's reasonable. Although there is a chance they have another cut down, and then uh, they can take out Paleontologist, whereas they wouldn't have been able to cut down Hammer Skull if I just played a tapped ridge line on turn two. But this way we can play Hammer Skull next turn, and then hopefully Dracosaur the turn after. So up against the Grixis. And yeah, they're looking at the Paleontologist, so this may not work out for us. At least with Cavern, we don't need to worry about counter spells too much. Bitter Triumph, the new removal spell. But we found another Cavern. So play Hammer Skull. Next turn, we've got another one to make sure we don't get a stun counter. Corpse Appraiser for a bit of card advantage here. I think we still Hammer Skull over Yurling. And our opponent's down to 10. Next turn already potentially facing a lethal attack. So the damage from Hammer Skull adds up. But of course it doesn't have any fancy abilities. So if they have a bunch of spot removal here, we might still be in trouble. For now Harvester. And our opponent passes, we will be able to play Dracosaur. I think I should still play it main phase, in case they have one spot removal spell, we don't have to worry about a stun counter. Even though it does give up a little bit of information here about what we might do next. Also had the option of animating our creature land, but I think this is slightly better. Bone on double blocks. And what else? Looks like they do have removal, go for the throat. But they still take six. Okay, it's gonna be close. The creature land can maybe help cross the finish line if Hammer Skull doesn't do it. And our opponent goes digging with a bitter union. Possible they have a reanimation angle. Discards another reunion. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, no answer for Hammer Skull. So while they had plenty of interaction, eventually the 6-6 six, six for 3 mana got it done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And our hand's a little bit slow to get going. No 1 or 2 mana accelerants. Missing a third land, so we'll take Mulligan. This is better. Get to go Lore Keeper, hopefully turn 3, Raptor, and take it from there. And then we gotta get rid of one card here. Could be the Hatcher, if Raptor survives we can just play Kogla and Yudaro instead. So we'll try that. And then if I want to play a Lore Keeper on one, we would have to use Cavern, so instead I'll just go for Tapped Rockfall Veil. 
potentially miss out on a 3 mana dinosaur on turn 2, but this is going to play out better. Opponent Naya Colors. Could also be a dinosaur deck. And Lorekeeper gets lost. We get two map tokens. Okay, so we'll have to wait another turn on our a raptor here. That's okay. Name dinosaur, pass a turn. And Gwenna is next. Okay, we could take it out with the trumpeting Carnosaur's ability, dealing three damage. Although at this point I think we just play Raptor and then next turn we can potentially fight with Cogland Idaro, or we can cast the Carnosaur. But our opponent does now have five mana for creatures, and the Hammer Skull makes a lot of sense. Untap Gwenna right away. Make that two of them. Okay, that's a lot of power and toughness. So we could fight one of the Hammer Skulls. Could just play Carnosaur, see what we hit, and this can trade for one of them. Although it's possible Gwenna's actually the bigger threat, and then it can just block the Hammer Skulls. So I like that idea. And then we can still explore with the map token as well. So the fight happens. And let's explore. Probably on Hulking Raptor at this point. And do we want a Yurling? I could play it and still play Carnosaur alongside it. So it's not the worst. But it would need another large dinosaur afterwards until it can attack past the Hammer Skulls. I think we can Graveyard here and look for some of our other expensive cards. Could also offer the trade for Hammer Skull, since I don't really need the extra mana. And that might be safer in case they remove Coggle and Hidaro next turn. Opponent accepts. Okay, so now if they have removal for Kogla, we're not going to take 12. Alright, the Raptor is next. That's acceptable. So let's see what we discover here. Hopefully a nice 5 drop. Alright, just another Paleontologist. Can eventually get back our dinosaurs. And don't really want to trade, although if I trade for Hammer Skull, I guess Carnosaur can keep attacking next turn. That's fine. And then Paleontologist can once again get back Kogla and Hidaro as well. Still have a map token we can use. And there's another Kogla and Hidaro. So, a couple of options here. Although I'm kind of liking Hasty, Kogla and Hidaro. It is possible our opponent's playing with Wandering Emperor. Not really a dinosaur, but still a powerful white card. So, gotta keep that in mind. But, uh, we'll just cast our Ape Dinosaur and then go for Tramplant Haste. And then we could sacrifice a map token now, I suppose. And maybe get an extra point of damage in. Could also put counter on Paleontologist if there's a non land on top. Which lets it attack past the Raptor. Close call. Let's go with uh, Carnosaur here. And then I don't need another Paleontologist. Smash. And we'll see what happens. Opponent takes it, falls to 5. Now we might get hit by Gishoth here on the way back. So that's certainly a possibility. Opponent just has their own Paleontologist. 
All right, so we get to see our red-green dinosaurs in action, and I'm quite pleased with how the deck turned out. It has access to some very explosive starts with a Lore Keeper and Paleontologist making mana, especially if we can set up an early Hulking Raptor, which helps us ramp even more. Now, of course, we are playing a lot of creatures into potential sweeper effects, so those are going to be pretty rough, as they can also reset all our mana creatures, and then it's going to be pretty difficult to rebuild. So we could potentially fine-tune the deck to have fewer mana creatures and more sorceries and artifacts to help us ramp, or we could also potentially lower the curve of the deck and cut some of the top-end cards like Itali, which may not be necessary, and instead add more hasty dinosaurs such as Rampaging Raptor, which can also be pretty good at punishing opposing planeswalkers. So there's a few ways we can approach dinosaurs in standard, and it will depend on the meta game whether we want a more low to the ground build, or if we want to go over the top, maybe even add a third color to make room for Gishoth, which can also be a lot of fun. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.